Oh, well, welcome everybody back to our webinar series about the courses that we are offering through Gaming Concepts and Generation Esports. With us today again are Dr. Christy Custer, Dr. Michael Russell, authors of the book, authors of the curriculum, educational gurus, uh, esports fanatics, many other titles to come. Um, my name is Alex Herbie, and we're going to be talking about Gaming Concepts Interactive Media today, um, specifically a deep dive into the course um, and what it is. So Mike, how did, how did interactive media come about? Well, it came about from uh, a lot of discussions after our first course being done and, and kind of Christy and I talking about our, our ambition when we first started all this is like, oh, we're gonna have this awesome esports pathway and we're gonna, everybody's <laughs> gonna do it, right? So that was kind of our impetus to starting this, but um, through discussions with people and other educators, um, there was a strong desire for not only a second level course, but also the CTE mm -hmm. integration that we have now. So. That's really where it kind of started. Um, it also helped us to unlock like a funding source. You know, CTE funds can be used. So we, we knew we had to kind of align it with CTE standards. Mm -hmm. And it has opened up and we know people have used this to get their labs funded. So they've been able to get equipment because there's a curricular tie in and also pay for a teacher. Mm -hmm. So because in most cases you get more more funding for a CTE class than you would a traditional school class. Right. So. Um, um, and we also wanted to identify a course that was not, that is already approved some in most schools, but was not taught because there's a lack of, of curriculum or, or something like that. Or, you know, there's teachers who are trained to do it, but they don't have any coursework. And in many CTE classes, especially things like this, the teachers are, are finding their own resources, right? Yeah. They have to accumulate their own things and put it together and make it, you know, present it and everything. So this was just a great fit. So it works right with digital media, interactive media, a lot of different course codes. So we can just pop it right in there and they can just use it. And that's kind of where we get to the talking about the, is this a new course? Is it a textbook? Mm -hmm. So we have some schools who adopt our things as a full course and call it interactive media. Mm -hmm. Some some of them just use it as a textbook. Yeah. So. And when I saw this course the first time I was looking at it, when you guys started to show it to me, I thought immediately of, this is, as, as my background was, was shop, mm -hmm. this is exactly like a shop class, right? Is that this is the resource, this is the textbook, because so often a lot of these elective teachers are coming up with their own curriculum mm -hmm. out, of the, out, you know, out of their heads. And so what a great resource or you know, full textbook, which it is, right? right. Um, full resource for a teacher to use in the classroom. Yeah. Yes. So we took a lot of, um, we took a lot of ideas from the classes that we looked at and so we built in like 2D design and 3D design and there's some web design in here. And, um, you know, one of my favorites is, you know, how to build a, you know, the kids design a gaming lab in 2D. Mm -hmm. So like their dream gaming space for their school. So they literally go in the room, either their classroom or the room they want their lab to be in and they design it. Yeah. And then they design it in 2D, but then the program that they use allows them to transform that into 3D. So yeah. then they can actually see it as, as they want it. So. Some really cool stuff. I mean, um, you know, Christy has a journalism background, so she, you know, digital photography is obviously in her wheelhouse. So there's there's some great lessons on digital photography. I remember the great picture that's in there. So she did some great things <laughs> with that. Um, we also talk about law, like intellectual property. You know, when you take a picture and you put it out there, who owns that? Mm -hmm. Is it still yours? You know, can somebody just go use it as they want? So yeah. we talk a lot about that and, and copyrights and, and things of that nature and, um, you know, I learned a couple of things too. I, I'm not familiar with Gantt charts and those are, mm -hmm. you know, this is obviously something that a lot of people use and when they're designing things and planning out any other day. So Gantt charts are, are kind of a big part of our lesson because that's how they keep themselves together. Industry. So, that's yeah, what yeah, industry yeah, is. Exactly. So, and this, and this course, I think, mm -hmm. which is, which is technically, would you agree that it's like the second course in our sequence, yes. right? The second one. Mm -hmm. Um, application. You know, yeah, the application yeah. level of a CTE level course. Mm -hmm. And I think that this one, you know, the Gaming Concepts Fundamentals is kind of your intro and you want to, you know, get your feet wet and kind of understand some some yeah. esports things and some, you know, tech, tech, tech things. But this one, I think it really branches. It allows students to really immerse themselves in a lot of different areas so that they can spend the rest of high school doing what they know they really like. So whether they continue in that esports path where they move into journalism or broadcast mm -hmm. or, you know, they want to move into business, I think that this really kind of facilitates that spread um, of allowing students to really find themselves. Um, well, and they, they, I think they find out also, and, and the adults in the building find out also that esports is not 
about video games <laughs> or, or not just about video yeah. games where um, I, I tell the story about when Mike uh, strategically and brilliantly took me to BlizzCon because I thought that what he was trying to do was teach teach people how to play video games. Well, that wasn't it at all. And I walked into BlizzCon and first of all, I, I spent $250 on the tickets or on one ticket on a ticket on yeah. a ticket and, and it sold out immediately and so there's there's that whole marketing piece there and then we went in and we stood in line to get uh, swag or no, uh, merch. merchandise and so there's merchandising there's um, you know designing design work going on there is journalism going on Set camera production. work yeah I mean, all I mean when I walked in I thought this is an industry yeah Absolutely. And many people can be involved in this industry. And prior to that experience, and I think that's where this class comes from also, I thought esports and video games were the video game designers and the tech people that... Yeah. that Coded it. Exactly. Yeah. And then the players. Mm -hmm. That's not it at all. And so I think this is, once again, that engagement piece that we talk about so often with esports and meeting kids where they're at. This class is showing kids... There are tons of career fields yeah. that, let's say you live in a part of the world that doesn't have a, a big esports population, but mm -hmm. I imagine there are lawyers. You know, you can be a lawyer, you can yeah. be a, a designer, you can be a journalist, you can be a writer, you can be a social media manager. There are just so many jobs involved yeah. here. Yeah. I had a friend in college and they, they had a fashion des degree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now she works for Blizzard right. and she designs armor. She's a that's fashion awesome. designer for armor, which is insane to me to think, yes. you know, that that's where her you know, career mm -hmm. led her. Awesome. But, you know, it, it really does show like lawyers, accountants, fashion designers. It, it, Esports is just the filter, right, that yeah. they're, they're, they're within. So. Well, and the other thing is we so often in education talk about we are preparing kids for jobs that don't exist. Mm -hmm. Our jobs. You're looking yeah. at three people yeah. whose jobs yeah. did not <laughs> exist five years ago. Right. And so... I think that, you know, it is on the cutting edge. It's on the cutting edge of education. It's changing education. Mm -hmm. And so it's a great opportunity to teach kids um, to have an entrepreneurial spirit, first mm -hmm. of all, and, and that what could you create out of this class? And then it's leading them down a path that, you know, be creative, be creative with these jobs, be creative with these skills. It, it, maybe you have a skill um, that you're enhancing through this class mm -hmm that you don't even know needs to be used yet right, yeah. because they're going to invent that. Some of the most successful programs I've seen in, in teaching for 10 years has been the entrepreneurial and the comp competitive type classes, right? Mm -hmm. So business classes or even shop classes where you're trying to make a product, you're trying to sell a product, you're learning about business, mm -hmm. you're, there's a challenge component to it or competitiveness to it. These are the classes that kids want to take because of that spirit within them of, mm -hmm. of you know, this drive to, to, to do something great. And, and I think that this really encapsulates it for sure. Yeah, we, I mean, in, oh, in there we also have animation, so that's important. And I wanted to talk about Zach real quick, just yeah, real quick. Yeah, sure, yeah. So I was um, a kid I taught in my first and only year of video game design, um, uh, went to actually do me an intern at Blizz, Blizzard. And uh, he was, uh, his work was in the latest expansion and I was able to go take my picture in the game where my student made that part of the game. So, um, and that's a, I mean, internships at Blizzard or in any of these companies are, are hard to get. I mean, they're not easy. It's a long process. And I was so, you know, it was awesome to say that I had a little piece of that, but I think that's what we all want as teachers is to yes. say, we helped this person get to this. And he never would have, when he, when I taught him, he never would have thought of that. Like that was not on his radar, but mm -hmm. I think, you know, people, you know, being involved in these classes and learning these things got him to that point. And yeah. now he's in the army and he's doing well. But um, That's awesome. he's, you know, that, that was, uh, I think uh, it was awesome for me, but I think really great for him. So, yeah. So interactive media, we kind of know <laughs> some things that they do in it, but what, what is it? What are the nuts and bolts of it? Right. Well, it is mammoth. It is huge. Yeah. Uh, interactive media, it's uh, 220 pages long. Uh, if you're not familiar with with uh, gaming concepts courses, that's that's a long book. Mm -hmm. There are only 62 lessons in it, but it is a year long. It is a one credit course. 
easily one credit course. Because most of those no days, reason. most of those lessons are multiple days. Yes. Right, which is where we spread it out to being yeah. like a ton of lessons because some of them are three, four, five days well, because project of the projects. Level. Yeah, project-based. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, very yeah. project-based learning. Um, the structure the, of, of the delivery of the content is very similar to all of the other gaming concepts courses, very flexible. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there is that gaming piece there because that's that engagement piece. Um, and the application piece that we want the, the students to learn, but it's 20 to 30 minutes of direct instruction, 20 to 30 minutes of indirect instruction practice. And then there's that journaling piece that they're gonna fight you yep. at the very beginning, but please keep that in there. And especially for this <clears throat> course, and I'll talk about that in a second. And then there is that purposeful play piece. Mm -hmm. The purposeful play piece in interactive media, we've moved from um, where in, in fundamentals, it was a lot more, more loose. Like what did the teacher decide to do? Mm -hmm. um, the journaling piece in interactive media, as well as the purposeful play piece in interactive media is much more guided. Mm -hmm. you're, you're really getting to the purpose of it. And an example that I think that I would like to give is, uh, almost every digital media or interactive media course is going to have to do with color. There's going to be lessons on color. And typically I've taught lessons where, you know, there's the color wheel and, you know, maybe you design a room and, and look around why are, you know, hospital rooms light blue and, and it's a very soothing color and you look at that. Well, in our, th this particular lesson, we talk about how, how can five-year-olds who do not know how to read, how can they make their way through a video game? Why do they know what to do? And we talk about the use of color in video games and you know, how does it create the mood? It's very, you know, if something's very dark. It's almost like a scary movie. You know, you know, you know, something ominous is coming or they'll use green arrows. That means go this way, or they'll use red for stop or, and so, they learn all of that in the context of the video game and then they will go to a video game and they will look for those elements in the game and then they'll journal about those elements. So it's much more guided probably than the fundamentals was where you could you could in fundamentals you can open that up and maybe there's a there's a current event going on that mm -hmm. that you want to relate it yeah. to. This one is much more guided um, in the lessons. But other than that, the the content delivery, like I said, this is a this is a one credit course. It is definitely a one for credit sure, course. For sure. You're going to hit on all of those standards that um, are in those CTE courses. I, we feel very confident that uh, they're going to come out of here. They're going to have a, a if they choose to use Adobe, we, we, we are still staying agnostic mm -hmm. with this class where um, we didn't want it to become the haves and the have nots that the schools that had money and could afford Adobe Photoshop can take this class. But if you didn't have Adobe Photoshop, you can't take the class. And so if you want those certifications um, and you choose to use Adobe, we, we use uh, platforms that are free or web based so that everybody can use it. But if you want to go through and you want to just use Adobe Photoshop with it, mm -hmm. then then you can you know go for that certification. Absolutely. So. Um, some of the uh, course codes that you might be using, um, the visual communications design, multimedia art, visual arts, uh, of course, the any type of the multimedia design courses, um, computer and information technology. There's just a, a whole list yeah. of courses that that may meet this course code with no or very little you know, tweaking. Mm -hmm. And then I know you're going to talk about this a little later, you know, where does it fit yeah. with the state standards and annual visit with that, but very project based, uh, students will have the opportunity to serve as team leaders, uh, facilitate meetings. There'll be project managers, uh, a lot on giving and receiving criticism, mm -hmm. uh, because that's such a feedback. Yeah. feedback. Yeah. It's yeah. very important, you know, working as a team, mm -hmm. we all know that. And mm -hmm. so just a, just a great class. I think that, um, it's going to be engaging for students. It's going to be authentic for students and they're just really going to enjoy it. Something that we have kept in, um, we have those mental health moments back yeah. where they're written right into the class. Uh, so, you know, they'll, they're not going along. I'll use teamwork for the example, you know, how to get along with other people. That's often a, a character trait that schools are working on, something that's mm -hmm. very valued by business. You know, we don't stop the class and talk about, you know, how do you get along with people? We 
you just do it. It's built into the courses. And so the teacher will know, just like in fundamentals, there's a little, little blue head that says this is a mental health moment in here. And so it's being intentional, you know, just like with the purposeful play piece, the teacher should be intentional about teaching that skill and the teacher will know that's the skill. And then um, those are built, you know, right into the lessons once again. Uh, speaking of the purposeful play, I talked about it. it's a little bit more intentional here. Um, we'll give you some ideas of uh, at the front of the book, you know, what are some games that you can play, but you can still use the board games. You can still use the uh, web-based games. You know, if you don't have a Brawlhalla or a um, Overwatch or something that you're going to, to download, but still have that purposeful play that the students will, instead of playing the games, they will be playing the games looking for something in the games. Um, this is, like Mike mentioned, a career in technical education. If they, they choose it to do, if they choose that pathway or it's in their school, um, it's going to be under uh, the web and digital communications pathway. Um, but it can also fit under the AV arts and media. Right. So it right. fits under it fits under two pathways very well. Yeah, um, that's true. And, and you mentioned to talk about standards, and I think this is a good time to talk about it. If, if it's going within a CTE, you know, uh, guide, you yes. know, if it's going to go in a pathway, then, you know, you have to be aligned. Right. Yes. And so we've we've taken the the we've taken the jump and we, we we've talked about this in a previous video. But, you know, every state will be aligned to the standards that it meets. And so for interactive media, it will be aligned to your state specific standards for web and digital or or AV um, arts and media and whatever your state's gonna recognize as, as it being more closely aligned to. But you know, ultimately you can choose which pathway you'd like to put it in. If you're, right. gonna, if you're gonna build your own eSports pathway, do it. You know, more power to you. Yeah. Um, but we, we are gonna offer that alignment to you. And so the ability for it to align really opens up the ability for, for districts to quickly add this in, right? Yeah. If you have, like when I taught, you know, something like interactive media on the books, if you've got something like you know, visual arts on the books, or even if you're going to add it to photojournalism or photo um, photo imaging, right? Mm -hmm. This this would be a great, you know, either supplement or, you know, project-based curriculum for those courses because of the dependency of the project-based uh, learning that happens in this course, as well as its close connections to photo, video, image editing um, and manipulation yeah. in here. Yeah. Um, and even, you know, tying cross-curricular ties to business, mm -hmm. right? There's a lot of business things in here where you're creating graphics for an esports team, which could be your business, or, you know, you're creating, you know, all kinds of different digital assets um, that could be used in conjunction sure. with a business course. You know, right. maybe you're, you're, you know, this class in Photoshop or, or digital imaging is creating images for the business class or for the esports team even mm -hmm. right you could mm -hmm. have a lot of cross-curricular um, tie-ins with this if you're if you're going if you're going for esports mm -hmm. you're building absolutely it's that discussion once again are we going to implement it as a class mm -hmm. are we going to use it as a resource in a class that mm -hmm. we already have are we going to use it in an after school program are we yeah. going to use it with our esports team it's just very versatile right there one thing i do want to um, point out that some people might know this course is actually, some schools are using it in conjunction, cooperation with their local colleges and especially mm -hmm. community colleges. This is a dual concurrent credit course yeah. also in some schools. And so if schools have an interest in, in dual concurrent credit, what a great way to engage some of those kids that didn't think that they were college material. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually, uh, teachers or, or counselors just need to get in touch up with us. We've uh, aligned that to um, a class. Uh, it's called, I can't remember now, basic Please digital uh, basic digital editing is, is a course that we know that aligns to at a lot of colleges. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when you're teaching this, you know, it's going to be in a CTE kind of, um, you know, a CTE field, right? So whether you're going to align it to, um, information technology, you're going to align it to web and digital or AV arts and media. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, how you teach it is going to be different than a traditional class because of the technology component, right? So any of your CTE level classes, you know, whether it's going to be CAD or it's going to be business or it's going to be photo imaging, right? They're all going to have their own kind of, you know, requirements and, and modalities on how they're supposed to teach. Mm -hmm. But 
what's great about this is, is just like gaming concepts fundamentals is that you have the the choice on how you want to teach it right mm -hmm. so you know you can teach it synchronously or asynchronously you know blended traditional virtual all of those are, are open to you um, through either working through the books the teacher editions or maybe you want to do more teacher centered where you're at the front and you're you're going over the curriculum and the and the and the uh, instructions with the students at the board or you're going to allow them to have some ownership of it and you're going to do kind of a blended version where they're going to do a couple of modules or lessons and then we're going to come back together reflect um, and i think that that really is nice that teachers you know everybody's different they all teach different right and so you can teach your strengths here so if yeah. you're if you're more of a hands-off teacher like i was the blended worked great because mm -hmm. you know i could see the learning take place, the kids could take ownership of that learning in their pods and then come back together and, and, and demonstrate that learning. So, you know, the investment with, an, with any esports course and any course that you start off with, um, it needs to be it needs to be high, right? You have to invest yourself into it to get success out of it. Mm -hmm. And I think that with gaming concepts, especially um, as rigorous as a course as this, there unfortunately, there has to be a high investment in it. But what that means is that typically that high investment is I'm going out to do the research. I'm learning how to do Photoshop mm -hmm. or I'm learning mm -hmm. how to do Canva or, or, or video editing. And so none of that is required here. All of that has been done by us to, right. to make it as simple as possible for the teacher. This is the, the Ronco of, of <laughs> curriculum, right? You can set it and forget it, yeah. right? Yeah, right? Chicken at home. That's right. Yeah, you know, you know the crock pot of, of, of <laughs> the oven, right? The, what was it? The, the oven thing, whatever. I don't remember. The that. yeah, the rotisserie, rotisserie oven, right? Yeah. yeah. So. And so, so this this curriculum, right, is 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 just all laid out for you, right? It has timing, it has scripting, it has standards, it has all the projects built in, mm -hmm. and all the instructions. And mm -hmm. if you give that to a teacher, they're going to find success in just getting back to the craft of teaching. Right. They're going to be able to have better interpersonal skills and relationships with those kids. They're gonna be able to push those kids to perform better and to succeed better and to achieve more because they can focus on the student achieving and delivering versus all of the background stuff that teachers have to deal with on lesson planning, curriculum and, and resource finding, all of that is taken care of. And I okay. think that that's the best thing about it, right? Is, is that we've taken care of all that. So how, how much is your time worth? That's right. How exactly. much is your time worth, right? Because mm -hmm. this this class will be the most fun you've ever taught. Is the, mo the the most fun class you've ever taught. Yep. So you know, and and if there's something that you don't know, the kids probably know it, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're struggling with a tech issue in one of these courses, the kids are the best resource to go to, um, aside from you know contacting us, right, for support. But right. you know, go to your kids because because that can be a learning moment for for everybody. Well, and I think I think the fact that we built it from an agnostic standpoint as far as technology, you can. You can work towards your strength. If you're familiar yeah. with one program, mm -hmm. use that program. Absolutely, it's perfectly able. It's perfectly available to you. We've made the lessons. You know, this is the expectation of the lesson, and these are. We don't go through the exact steps of how to make this line appear this way. Yeah. But you have your program, and you know what your program. You know, you exactly. know, you know that program. So. Yeah. And it's so project based, and we, being teachers, we've set it up. Uh, I was a. a journalism teacher, I was in charge of the newspaper, you know, those production pieces, if, if you're the social media person in your school, mm -hmm. you know, there's a whole section here where kids can choose to, to brand your school, to brand your social media, to do, mm -hmm. you know, so you can pretty much kill two birds with one stone yeah. and it can be a production class also. Absolutely. So okay. now we're going to talk about technology yeah. and then what we need for this class to work. So there is a, there are a few things, a few differences, but as you know, and if you watch every video in our series, you're going to see me say this, hear me say this. It's the two most important letters in eSports e are IT. Mm -hmm. So uh, you need to be friends with your IT professional in your, in your building or in your district. And, you know, hopefully they're receptive to what you're trying to do. Yeah. So we want to make sure that, you know, you're, you're working together as a team. So, because you are gonna run into some IT difficulties, especially if you're using programs that you've not used before. Um, you will need to have some, some different ports open and availability, some websites outside that might not be normally in your filter. Uh, so you're gonna to have to get those filtered out. And, and there's a lot of strategies that we've found to work. Um, I don't do this for a living as far as setting these things up, but I mean, I know you can Isolate groups of students so they can be outside the internet. You can open up a whole room for it. You can open some certain devices. 
Um, in our in our case, one room specifically was dedicated where it could get onto these websites and do the things that were required. And every kid that came in there was able to access those things. So just some options you can throw out for your IT professional as you're talking to them and trying to get things moving for your class. So um, when we talk about software, the, we, we point out things in the curriculum that you should that you can use, but that's not required. Like you said, it's nice that you're able to be agnostic about it. And if you have something that you really love using, I mean, if you're a, an Adobe fan and your school has Adobe Suite, use that. If, mm -hmm. you know, but there are a lot of free programs out there that also emulate what you know Adobe does. So um, use those things. Which we provide to, which we provide yeah. to you. Yeah. So, yeah. so instructions on the free stuff is, is all there for you. If you want to go beyond that and yeah. expand that into, you know, some sort of industry recognized platform, for whatever you're trying mm -hmm. to do, go for it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, make that connection for your class or, or for you know a CT program in your building. The, the part you're going to need help with on that is, you may not be able to access the website unless your IT person helps you right. do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, that's the key is you're, you go through the course you know ahead of time and and kind of give your IT people a heads up that you know because last minute for IT people is yikes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of catastrophes and it's hard to yeah. manage all that. So. Um, we've talked, you know, whitelisting, that might be part of what you get into. Um, as far as the purposeful play, again, we do have all of the games, you know, listed for you. But again, it's totally up to you what you use. You don't have to use any of the games we suggest, mm -hmm. but we do have that list of suggested games in there. It just kind of depends on how much time is left in class and what you're kind of focusing on in the, in the curriculum at the time. Uh, you know, if you're wanting to focus on color and, and movement of the screen, that's a different game than, mm -hmm. you know, shading and, and different environments in another game so yeah. you know focus on those things um again they're going to need accounts the kids are going to need their own game accounts so you're going to have to pay for those not pay for those you might have to pay for them but many of them are free so it just kind of depends on which games you choose um, we were able to do a lot of um free games in our class we did have a one game we had to purchase and mm -hmm. but a lot of esports titles are free mostly so, no, most of them are nice. actually yeah. yeah it is nice um um free i mean we'll, we'll throw that they're free and we won't get into the economics of esports but i mean that gets a whole different thing the game but itself is the free. game itself yeah. is free <laughs> correct so um again if you're teaching this interactive media course you probably are on i'm going to assume you're on some pretty decent equipment because it's it's a cte course and it's mm -hmm. but if you're wanting to get that equipment and this is the way for you to get the equipment as using the interactive media course use that use that as your funnel for that so and um, the other thing, my, my last tech tip is always, have you tried restarting it? So that will save your, I promise you, you even, even I do this, <laughs> even I do this, like, and I'm, I'm fairly techie, but I, I've had issues come up in my own classroom where it's like, I've tried everything I can, restart it, and yeah, it works. It works. Yeah. So do that before you involve anybody else. Just, yeah. just, just do that. That'll, that will help you a lot. That'll so save your IT department. Save your IT a lot of time and frustration, I promise. So, so you know, talking about technology, you know, there's the hardware side, like you're talking about, you know, that might be computers, consoles, mm -hmm. you know, the, the physical things of the, of the class, but the technology behind the curriculum is also important for these courses because all of our courses are available uh, through sure. a learning management system, mm -hmm. you know, through an online platform. And what's great about, you know, a, a learning management system, which everybody watching this probably is familiar with, right? You, either you're talking about Schoology, Edmodo, Canvas, Blackboard, something like that. Um, <clears throat> you know, they facilitate that content in a lot of different types of ways. Mm -hmm. But I think that one that's been built by teachers, which is us, right? We've, we've built the LMS from the ground up, yep. is that it, it is built for teachers, by teachers. So it does a lot of really cool things, mm -hmm. right? And so <clears throat> I love our LMS because of one of one of the things I love about it is is the interactivity piece that students have. Mm -hmm. It's not in every LMS, you know, out of the box. That might be something that you have to add on or code in or something like that. But you know, so so often we get these LMSs and it's, you know, you just dump content in there and the kids read it and they turn it in and that's it, right? That's it's just a content delivery system. It's right. all it is. Um, but you know, when you start to manipulate things online and you you have interactivity features and engagements built into the lessons, then students can really understand the content in either a new or a deeper way because they because they're interacting with it. They're doing something with it. And we all know that, you know, when you do something, you learn it better than if you're just, you know, told it or, or even if you just watch it. 
um, for most people, right? If, if you do it, then then you can kind of understand it a little better, a little, a little deeper. And, you know, with this is there's a lot of engagements like that. And I, and I really love that the students can be active. It, you know, it's an active learning system, mm -hmm. right? It's not just online learning, it's active. Um, and so, you know, the, the, the LMS offers all of our courses, you know, everything is built in for the teacher um, and for the students. So if you want to do it completely virtual, if you have a virtual school, which we have a few virtual schools with us, um, you know, they put the content out there, the students can interact with that, turn it into their teacher and, and, and you know, go from there. But otherwise, you know, it's a very streamlined, efficient thing. Um, and I know your favorite thing is the calendar on it. Yeah. So tell us well, about the calendar. The great thing about it, you know, when I'm thinking of my experience with Blackboard, that was me going into the course and I'm dumping and I'm finding all my files and I'm dumping and I'm dumping and I'm dumping mm -hmm. and creating folders where with our course, you set a start date, you set an end date. These are the dates that, that Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Monday through Friday, Tuesday, Thursday, mm -hmm. click populate. Populate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I mean, and that's how techy I am. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. So I mean, you know, speaking to that, you know, there's a lot of time investment. How much is your time yes. worth, right? Of adding a, a section or a lesson or a, a, a you know a day's lesson, you know, each day of the week um, versus the entire unit is dropped in there for the month or the semester, right. right? You just click it and it's in there. Now you can do all kinds of things like you know you can do it one day at a time if you'd mm -hmm. like instead mm -hmm. of doing you know the whole batch import. Um, but you know, the same thing is that you can move things around. It's, it's like a, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a really good user interface with a good user experience because you can take any course on any one day or any lesson on any one day and drag it to another day and you just drag it and it automatically reassigns it to the kids. You don't go into it. You don't change the due dates. It's, it's, ver it's, it's graphical, right? It's, it's drag and drop. Well, so the, the other thing that I think gets the ways on you, if you're using Blackboard or some, you know, a different system is. You have to update all that too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, I built a course for 2023. Oh, this thing happened. They chipped, uh, yeah. This thing changed. Mm -hmm. We're we're doing that for you. Yeah. Like everything we're doing is updated in the LMS. So as soon as you import it, it's the most up to date thing we've done. So right. if there's videos that change or or you know yeah. esports eco or esports scene changes or whatever, yeah. then then you've got it all right there for you. One of the problems with online learning is the ability to maintain the mm -hmm. content that you have on there. And it takes a huge effort to be able to yeah. keep it relevant. And with this, we're able to make, we typically make small changes and, and minor adjustments in December during Christmas break, things that need to happen. And then we do large overhauls over the summer while nobody's using it. Because when you come back, you should have a completely up-to-date relevant course. And I think yeah. that that's such a, a strength that we have, uh, being able to keep those courses updated. Right. Some of the other resources we have for you um, you know, through Generation Esports is a dedicated service team. So when you buy this thing um, and, and you, you become, you know, part of this, this ecosystem, you know, you have dedicated service specialists and they are here to support you on curriculum, on how to teach it. And then also, which is another thing, a tournament, like how to do tournament, right? So you have a dedicated person that will, that will help you with all that face to face, right? It's not some call center. It's not some chat through some bot that's pulling information off the web, you know, it's it's an actual person and you can definitely, you know, understand how much more helpful that can be, right? Because no, nothing's more frustrating than trying to explain yourself three times as you're transferred between people, right, right? right. on the phone. So we have, you know, live service agents that can help us. Um, you know, we offer webinars like this, right? This is an in-depth dive, right, on, on, the, on the course. Um, but we also offer tons of other webinars throughout the year, right? Is we have our seasons throughout the year. So we have spring semester, fall semester, and then a summer one where we do, you know, tech. We talk about teaching, funding, coaching, you know, forms for teachers to, you know, have kind of a roundtable discussion. Um, it just kind of builds this community, this gaming concepts community of all of our teachers mm -hmm. to come together and learn something new. It's kind of like, you know, a free PD, basically, right? So, um, you know, it's something where people can come together. Uh, and same as the YouTube channel. So the YouTube channel for Gaming Concepts, we put all this content on there for you to have at your fingertips, for you to engage with, um, and for you to be successful in class. And so we have a lot of offerings that are completely free um, that you can kind of take on on your own and, and, and get the support that you need. But there's also other PD opportunities that right. we offer uh, new for this year. New for 23, 24, and, and we're really rolling it out as uh, really the pedagogy of it. 
Um, Mike and I both came from alternative schools and or the same alternative school. And, and there is no class in college to take to be an alternative school teacher. Mm -hmm. And so that uh, weighs on me. We, we became uh, like complete high school maze where where we came from. That became a kind of a learning school, you know, almost a, a teacher education type school for alternative ed. And when we've moved into um, esports as almost a new subject, you know, scholastic esports is almost a new new subject. We wanted there to be support for those people that we did not have as alternative school teachers that, you know, how do you do this? What technology so that I can become an expert in that? What is the pedagogy behind this? Mm -hmm. What, how do the mental health moments work? And so, you know, there's there's really four um, areas: the intro to esports curriculum and, and platform navigation, uh, fostering an, an inclusive and positive esports culture. That's something that esports gets slammed for is yeah. is the negative culture and the toxic environment. And then um, we can also do equipment specific training. So that's the four there that that we suggest for schools for professional development. And then there are eight more modules, like many modules that they can do and. We offer that in-person, um, hybrid type uh, situation, uh, virtually, and then coming, is it will be totally asynchronous where people can take those themselves and get that PD credit. On the LMS. For the, on the LMS, that's right. Well, I mean, we have talked about so much today with gaming concepts, interactive media, like it's such a huge course, there's so much to it. Um, hopefully, you know, it's it's a benefit to the teachers and educators that are that are watching this. Um, but we so thank you guys for your attention and your, your you know, your time to watch this. Um, if you need to contact us, please feel free to contact us about any of the information you got on this and we will see you next time. Thank you.